Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. We end today's show um, in Israel, where a fragile ceasefire remains in effect after four Palestinians and one Israeli soldier was killed during Violence Friday along the border with Gaza during the flare-up. Israel launched dozens of strikes that said were targeted Hamas rockets and mortars. The death of the Israeli soldier was the first since Palestinians launched weekly nonviolent protests at the border in March. Israeli forces have shot and killed at least 140 Palestinians during those protests, while well over 12,000 have been injured. This comes as Israeli lawmakers drew condemnation Thursday for passing a law that defines Israel as the nation-state of the Jewish people and gives them the sole right to self-determination. The law declares Hebrew the country's only official language and encourages the building of Jewish-only settlements and occupied territory as a national value. This is Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This is a defining moment in the annals of Zionism and the history of the state of Israel. The controversial bill passed on a vote of 62 to 55 over the objection of Arab Israeli lawmakers who threw papers in the air in protest after its passage. For more, we're joined by Democracy Now! video stream by Yusuf Munayir, the executive director of the U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, and joining us in studio, Rebecca Vilkomerson, executive director of Jewish Voice for Peace, co authored a new op. Bed and the Independent headlined, As Jews, We Reject the Myth That It's Anti-Semitic to Call Israel Racist. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, Yusuf, let's begin with you. Um, if you can talk about what's happened uh, in uh, Gaza right now, the death toll up to 140, and then move on to the law that was just passed um, on Thursday. Sure. Well, the most recent events that we've seen uh, in uh, the, the Gaza Strip are sort of a escalation that happens from time to time and forces, uh, you know, many in the media and us here in the United States and the outside world to tune back in uh, to uh, Gaza based on the fear that it is on the brink of uh, yet another major uh, Israeli bombardment. But the reality is that in those moments when we are not tuned in, uh, the constant and structural violence that Palestinians in Gaza face uh, because of the occupation, because of the policies of Israeli siege, and because of the violent methods of enforcement that the Israeli military uses to support those policies uh, continues all the time. And this is uh, altogether part of a broader agenda by uh, the state of Israel uh, to quell any sort of resistance uh, to uh, what it seeks to, to do throughout the entirety of the territory, which is to impose its will on the native population of Palestinians, both in the West Bank and Gaza and occupied territories, but also on Palestinian citizens of Israel, uh, under the premise that uh, it is the Jewish population that is in control, that deserves to be in control, and that uh, any rights at all that uh, may be afforded to uh, you know, uh, non-Jews are really done uh, as a favor uh, and not something that the, the Jewish state has to do uh, because of principles of equality or tolerance or democracy or anything like that. And the most recent uh, step that the Israeli Knesset has taken through the passage of uh, this law, I think, is, is the best uh, proof of that, showing very clearly that the Israelis no longer care about, uh, you know, uh, even pretending to balance this notion of being a Jewish state and a democracy, you know, I think that was never the case. Now it's clear that they're not even interested in pretending anymore. And in fact, the, uh, you know, the initiator and sponsor of this legislation said after its passage, we are passing this bill to make sure that no one has any doubt or even any thoughts about Israel being a state of all its citizens. So it's very clearly aimed at enshrining inequality, enshrining apartheid in a constitutional way within Israeli law. Rebecca Vilkomerson, if you can respond to this, what's being called the nation-state law that's been passed. Yeah, I mean, I think what Yusuf said is exactly right. I think I found it 
shocking but not surprising, because I think any time you have a set of, again, foundational law, this is a basic law, so it's sort of the equivalent of a constitutional um, bill that will then have an impact on any future laws. And it basically obligates the state to treat its non-Jewish citizens unequally, and that's 20 percent of the overall Israeli population. So by Israel enshrining racism and discrimination and apartheid into its basic law, that's pretty shocking. At the same time, not that surprising, because of the ongoing policies that Israel has been pursuing for and so many decades. And the response of the Jewish community? Well, here in the United States, I think it's been interesting, because there's much more unanimity than there usually is against this bill. Um, you know, everyone from J Street to the American Jewish Committee to the Reform and Conservative Movements, which together represent half of American Jewry, even some right-wing organizations like the ADL have had some limited concerns about the bill. And I think it's a reflection of, um, you know, Peter Beinart sort of had this seminal essay that he wrote in 2010, which talked about the ways that the Israeli, the Jewish Israeli population was moving to the right and the American Jewish population is staying sort of liberal and progressive and there's a split that's happening. And I think we're seeing the fruition of that. And people are just horrified by this sort of extreme right-wing agenda that I think the Netanyahu government is feeling empowered by the Trump administration to enact fully. Uh, you wrote a piece in The, uh, in the Independent, um, signed by—well, uh, about how 40 Jewish groups from 15 different countries have signed this joint statement condemning yeah. attempts to stifle criticism with false yeah. uh, accusations, you say, of anti-Semitism. Right. This was a pretty historic uh, moment. We Again, we had 40 organizations from around the world, Jewish and Israeli organizations. Um, and the, we felt like it was very important, because there's so many efforts right now worldwide, lots of different specific strategies and tactics, but worldwide trying to legislate definitions of anti-Semitism that sometimes include chilling language at the very minimum and sometimes actually legislate that forms of anti-Zionism or certain critiques of Israel would be defined as anti-Semitic. And this has resulted in bank accounts being shut down in Germany and in the UK, people being prosecuted in France. Here in the United States, there's something called the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, which would make it potentially, um, you know, extremely difficult for people to speak out politically against Israeli human rights violations. So we it was very important to lend a Jewish voice against that and to say that BDS is a legitimate tactic to be using in this particular moment. That's you boycott. were talking about the boycott, boycott divestment, divestment and sanctions, and yes. Sanctions movement. Youssef Mani, what happens from here, after this law is passed, and also in Gaza? Well, uh, I think there's, there's great concern for uh, what may happen in Gaza in the coming months. Uh, of course, as we know, in the major Israeli bombardments of Gaza in 2008, 2009, and in the fall of 2012, in the summer of 2014, uh, all of them preceded Israeli elections by a matter of months. Uh, and we are, um, you know, expecting Israeli elections in uh, 2019. Uh, and given the recent behavior of the ruling coalition, uh, with the passage of all kinds of right-wing uh, legislation aimed at uh, rallying the support of its base, uh, I, I would not be surprised if they were to attempt another uh, sort of massive operation uh, against the Palestinian population in Gaza ahead uh, of elections once again. So that's something that I would definitely keep my eye Yusuf on. Yusuf Moner, I, I, we have to leave it there for now. U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights and Rebecca Vilcomerson, Jewish Voice for Peace. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.